Today I'll be showing you how I make NBA wallpapers like this in 11 steps. Before I start, make sure to like and subscribe. Step 1. The first thing you want to do is create your canvas in Photoshop. Now a typical iPhone wallpaper will be 1080 width by 1920 in height. So you can go ahead and create that. But what I like to do is double it. And so what I'll do here is go 2160 by 3840. And that should give you a nice canvas looking like this. Um, and that's the size that your iPhone wallpaper will be. Step two, add in your illustration. Now you go up to file here in the top left and then you go down to place linked that should bring up your documents and then find your illustration. So I've got one of Paolo Banquero from the Orlando Magic, the number one overall pick this year. And if you haven't seen my other videos, go check them out. I'll show you how to draw them up, give you a little tutorial. And you just wanna place it just in the middle here, maybe towards the lower side, because oftentimes um, just over here in the upper area, you have like the time and date of your uh, phone. So just leave it there and just size it to where you want it to go. Step three, add a background color. Now what I like to do is I like to add in the color of the team, obviously, just to keep it consistent with the player. Um, so what I do here is I go down to this little button, I click solid color. Actually, let me redo that, my bad. So I'm gonna click this layer and put the solid color underneath. Click solid color should come up here and then you can use this eyedropper tool and I'm gonna click on this blue here and then just adjust it, uh, make it a little bit more saturated. And I think that looks nice. So yeah, we'll go with that color blue. Here's how it should be looking. Step three. Now for step three, I like to add in some background images and you can just go find these on Google. Uh, I've searched up Orlando and Disney World. I kind of like this picture right here. So I'll click on this. Um, it's a little bit low resolution, so maybe we'll find another one. This one here looks kind of nice. I'm going to put this picture of Disney World in, so I'm going to copy it, paste it here. And just resize it to how you think it would look nice. And then um, you want to change the blending mode or the fill, just so it blends into the background of the blue a little bit more. So I like to go overlay. That's a little bit, a little bit too dark, so I might change that around and just find the right one to make it blend. Uh, just play around and see which one it blends nicely with. So I've just played around with it for a little bit and I'm not really liking it so far. So I've added in a gradient map, I've duplicated this. So what I might do is just mask out the edges so it's not so hard. Just here, so we're gonna create a mask down in the bottom right. Grab a black brush, increase the size a little bit, and then just take off these edges so it blends in with the background. Just like that. And just switch it to white just to add in that top of the castle there. So for the top of the wallpaper, I'm gonna try putting this picture. Actually, no, let's do this one because it's higher resolution. So I'm going to do this, just wait for it to load. And then I'm going to put it up the top and then maybe turn it upside down. Um, just resize that real quick and drag it to there. Here we are. And then I'm going to go to image, sorry, edit, transform and flip vertical so it looks upside down. Kind of like this little look here. I'm gonna place that down and then mask out the top so it blends in again. Change the brush to black. It just blends in kind of nicely and then just change the blending mode to overlay. It looks kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna move the castle down a bit. You can't really see it. Hmm. We'll just play around with that. And then, then lastly, you want to add something along the bottom. So what I might do is find the Orlando Magic Court. This photo here is quite nice. So I'm going to, again, copy and paste it. Um, add it in below. Resize it. This looks nice. And then we're just going to mask it out. Just to the parts we want to keep. 
with the black brush and then I'm going to set the blending mode to overlay again and actually just try it on soft line. Step four. I think I'm up to step four. So what I'm going to do is just adjust some of these colors. So I'm going to create a new layer and then I'm just going to go get a blue brush and maybe just change the shade of it a little bit. And then I'm gonna set the blending mode to overlay and just play around with some of the colors. Um, and just make it more dynamic so it's not all just one color. Add some light in some places. And same with the darkness, you can add some blacks just along. And this just creates some more dynamic lighting around it just so it's not all the same color. Add some brightness in some parts, some darkness in other areas. Just play around with it until you get it right. This might take me a while, so I will fast forward this part. So here I've just played around with some of the colors and then I'm just gonna group them so my uh, document isn't too messy and same with the backgrounds. One last thing that I like to add is a brightness adjustment. So what I'm gonna do here is go into this group and create an adjustment right here. Uh, I'm gonna go down to brightness and contrast and turn it down. Actually, by the way, we're gonna do a exposure adjustment. So let's delete this. And we're gonna go here again, exposure, and then turn the exposure all the way down to about here. And then what I'm gonna do is click Control I and that will invert the mask so we can paint it in. So I'm gonna switch the brush color to a white and then just paint in the bottom um, area. Just there. And just play around with it. It gives it some nice contrast and just a little bit more environment. And yeah. Step five. Now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna add some exposure adjustments to the player. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't quite fit in with the environment, it kind of stands out a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a reflection into the court. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to duplicate my illustration here by clicking Control J. And then we're going to hold Control and then drag this little thing here. So it changes the perspective on it. I'm going to drag it out just like a shadow. I'm going to leave it about there. And once it's placed, I'm going to put it underneath the original one. And I'm going to turn the fill of the illustration down to about down to about 18%. And then what I'll do is add a filter, go blur, and then motion blur. And that just gives it a little reflection, kind of makes it fit in a little bit nicer. So it just looks like a little reflection into the court. And then I'm going to add some exposure adjustments. So what I'm going to do here is click on Parlor right there, go to my adjustments, click this one here, the exposure adjustment that we use for the darkness on the bottom, and I'm going to turn it up to about here. Again, Control I to invert it, and then we have the white brush. I'm not an expert on this, I'm still getting better at it, so bear with me here. I'm going to turn the size down a little bit, and the flow of the brush. So this, this just means we have to press a little bit harder uh, to get the same effect. So you just want to do it, uh, paint in the exposure where the light's hitting. So obviously we have uh, a light source coming from here and above and the lower parts are going to be a little bit darker. So let's start off by doing this. Before I start, just make sure you add in a clipping mask. You can do this by clicking Control alt g on Windows. And that just makes sure that when you paint in the exposure, only paints it in on the illustration. So here we go. Um, just paint it in here on the edges of his arm. Make it a little smaller. Yeah, and just paint it in. Uh, obviously the top of the hair. Just painting it in here where the light would hit. Now personally, I don't go too in depth with my exposure adjustments, so don't expect anything crazy from me. Um, I've just completed the lighting exposure adjustment, so if I turn it off, you'll see it looks like this. And then adding the exposure there just gives it a little bit more depth. 
and then we're going to do the same for the shadows so that's the highlights right there um what i'll do is add another exposure adjustment click here turn down the exposure make sure to add a clipping mask so you can click it down here that creates a clipping mask and then again we're going to control i to invert and then just paint in the shadows obviously uh where body parts are touching you want to paint it in there and then um yeah just where the light isn't really hitting so just like right under here for example paint that in can't really see it too much because it's already quite dark but if i paint sorry my flow is too low let's turn the flow up to about here so yeah you can just paint it in there So yeah, there's the shadow adjustments. If I take it off, this is what it originally looked like. Here it is with the shadows. And then if I add the highlights, here's what it looks like. It just gives it a bit more depth and makes it fit in with the environment. So for whatever step this is, I like to add in some objects. So I like to get my objects off in Bartho Elements. Uh, they have some really cool 3D stuff. So I'm gonna click place. Before that, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna place it behind them. Uh, I'll go into my files, see where it is. My 3D elements, objects. Uh, so yeah, you can see I have a nice little collection here from Envato Elements. And I wanna add in these little star things. I'm gonna increase it here. And yeah, just put it around here. What I like to do is I like to add a couple of these in and add some blur to it might even change the colors to see which ones fit in nicely and then just play around and paint in some exposure again just to make it fit into the environment I like to put that one there might find another shape put that there and then i'll chuck one more just on top of them so let's put him in a group it so i know where the heck i'm putting my things and then i'll just rotate it put it down here I do like the colors of this, so I will just leave it. So what I'll do here is I'll create a motion blur. That just gives the image some dip and makes it look like it's closer than it actually is and makes it look like it's moving. So down here, you can see if I turn the motion blur up, looks like it's traveling some distance or something, whatever you want to call it. So I apply that and I'll do the same to these ones right here and just adjust the blur to make it fit in how I want it to. So I'll turn this down a little bit. And same with this last one here, apply the blur. Now, I think this is step six. So what I'm gonna do is add in my effects. Now this can be light leaks or any other cool effects that you have in your graphics packages. Uh, I have some cool anime ones that I might put in. And I kinda wanna put in some fireworks in the background to make it seem more Disney-ish, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna go up here add in my light leaks i got some cool ones off the internet i got um some ones from ethan j shout out to ethan j designs and just some random ones off the bounce of elements but you can google these to search up light leaks um they got some cool ones up here now once you've placed your light leak it should look like this looks a little bit weird so what you want to do is change the blending mode to screen that should remove all the black stuff and then i like to create a mask and then just paint out the edges um, and I'll just adjust it here. That looks really nice. What I'll do now is search up some firework PNGs on Google. I'm gonna try these out. So what I'll do is go into my background layer, I'll chuck it on top, paste it, increase the size like that, and then I'll set it to screen. What you can do if it's too prominent, you can turn the fill down a little bit. Now I'm just going to go into my files and see what other effects I have that might look nice here. So I have an overlays one, got some nice little effects in here. Let's go with that. So I'm going to place this little anime effect in here, set it to screen. Gives it a little bit of action right here, which is cool. And I might change the color of this. So what you can do here is click it, add a hue and saturation adjustment, 
and then make sure to clipping mask it, click colorize, and then I'll turn the saturation up a little bit and just see which color fits in nicely. What I want to do here is just chuck this around his leg. So we're gonna adjust the perspective a little bit. And then mask out where the leg is. Turn this down. Just paint out the area. And then again, we're gonna add a hue and saturation adjustment just to change the color up a little bit. I don't really like this. Actually, it's not too bad. So we'll add a clipping mask in, colorize it, turn the saturation up. Kinda of like this pink. Step number seven, you can add in some text and logos. I like to add the team's logo down in the bottom hand corner. Um, I have some downloaded onto my computer, which I'll add just here. Add in the magic logo. Chuck it in the bottom right. Just here. Now we can add in some text, so we're just gonna play around with his name. It's gonna type Paolo. Uh, and choose a nice little font. So here I've just played around with the text and just placed it here. Now you may have noticed that this top third area is quite empty. That doesn't really matter because when we put it on a wallpaper, the time and the date will be covering this area. So I like to leave it empty, but you can put stuff here if you want to. I don't know what step this is, but for this next step, you're just gonna add some adjustments. Uh, you can add some exposure, you can turn it down, paint in some shadows or paint in some uh, nice little glows here. So you can invert it and then change your brush to a white. I'm just paint in the areas where it might look nice to have some brightness. The same for the vibrance, I might just turn this up a little bit. Looks like it saturates the image a little bit more, which looks cool. And then for the last one, I might just add some color lookups. So you can get these off the internet, it just corrects the color a little bit. Again, Ethan J's got some really cool ones. And other ones you can just get off the internet. Now once you're done with your wallpaper, you can come out here, click file, export, file, export, quick export as a PNG, name it, and then what I like to do is once I finish with it, I'll just email it to myself, and then I'll go into my iPhone and download it from Gmail, and then just set it as my wallpaper there. What I'm gonna do next is resize it for Instagram. So Instagram, the optimal dimension size is four by five. So what I'll do is change this image and we're gonna go canvas size and then I'll change the height from 3840 to 2700. As you can see, it's clipped a lot off, so I'm just gonna resize everything really quickly and then once this is done, it'll be ready to post my Instagram. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to comment them down below. For more content, make sure to like and subscribe and follow my Instagram.